Okay, I want to do an underwater scene, so I'm going to take a look at Thalassophobia, stylized ocean pack. It was in a recent bundle. It looks pretty good. This is the first time I've loaded it up. Let's see what first impressions are like. So I've already imported it. Let's take a look. There's a readme here that tells me I need post-processing and I need to set it up to linear. So let's do that. So I'm doing that at super fast speed here. You can slow down the video if you don't know how to do it, but this is pretty standard stuff. So having set the project up, I'm inside the first demo scene here and straight away I notice this weird pixelation around the fish. And I do manage to sort this out later on. Um, there is a quick fix that you can do for this. It involves a tiny little bit of code that I'm going to give you and resolves the whole problem. What's causing it is the water shader on the surface above. But the scene is pretty nice. I like the feel of it. These fish are quite cool. They're nice and lightweight. There's not heavy animations on them, but there's just enough to give them a bit of motion. Um, the rocks and so on are nice, but there's a few problems here and there. Like, look at this plant. It's kind of moving through the coral. But we can get around that by using it carefully. Oh, look at this shark. That looks pretty cool. Nicely uh, animated as well. Oh, but look at that. It really looks awful with that water. I promise you, going to show you some code to fix that. But in the meantime, take a look from over up above. It looks pretty good. You can see some more of the problems with these things here that are moving around through the rocks or the coral. We'll have a look at that later, see if there's anything we can do. Uh, I like the rocks, a nice little tunnel coming through here. And oh, look at that, there's some human habitation stuff. Or inhuman, maybe. Um, we can go inside there. There's nothing in here, but I guess we could populate it with uh, similar looking models. I don't know what would really work. I'd have to check that out. But uh, this looks pretty good. It's kind of interesting. Oh, you can drop out, make a kind of Subnautica kind of game, I guess. So this is looking pretty good so far. There's plenty of other scenes to look at. This is only a tiny little scene. Let's take a look above the water. That looks okay. And we can see that shader effect that's causing problems. The god rays look pretty awful from up here, but that can be fixed. And let's have a look at some of these plants that are moving around a bit weirdly. Let's remove that rock. Let's see. Yeah, look, the animation in the plant is all the way down, so that it's just kind of floating in the water. Um, that's going to look bad wherever you put it, so you're only going to want to use these in the background. Hopefully we'll have other plants in other scenes that we can use in the foreground. Let's have a look inside this sub. A um, bit hard to control in here, but let's have a look. Okay, so we've got a driver's seat. Oh yeah, look at this plant down here. It's doing the same thing. That just looks wrong. For me, I don't really like that at all. Plenty of movement, but uh, do not work for me. Let's take a look at the deep sea scene. This is supposed to be a dark scene with no light reaching down, despite the fact we actually have god rays coming down, but never mind, we can fix that. Uh, the buildings here look pretty good. They've got lights in them as well, so that's nice. Uh, same building as we had in the other scene. Um, okay, these plants here, they don't appear to be moving around in the way the others were so that's good we do have plants we can use in the foreground this scene also has some different fish and they're flocking in a different way so that's pretty cool um, not much movement in the animations on there but that keeps them cheap I guess let's take a look at another scene so this one is called dusk forest and it looks like we have some kind of building structure some fish swimming around in it that looks pretty nice and over here we have kind of a Taj Mahal type building thing. And yep, whoop, it's a full building over there, nice. What's in the forest here? Okay, it's kind of like a fish tank type of thing. Although, you know, look at this rather large fish for a fish tank. Okay, let's try another scene now. This is the kelp forest. Um, this is very different feel, isn't it? Very green, very nice and lush. The animation here is really nice, but I'm not sure about this bloom in the post-processing. It's way too bright. So let's have a look. Let's see if we can make this look a bit better. And let's have a look. Where's the uh, post-processing? Um, there it is. All right, so what we got? Yep, bloom. And yeah, this is pretty high. Let's bring the uh, diffusion down a fair bit here. Yeah, it's beginning to look better. And I think... Yeah, about there and let's try the intensity as well let's drop that back down yeah that's looking okay let's have a look in the scene now yeah that's looking good we've got the contrast still but it's not blinding in the in the light there i feel that's a lot better 
And you are getting a lot of different feels to this. There's a lot of variety happening here in these scenes, which is great. But what's not so great is these distortions here. It makes this scene look terrible. And this great hammerhead shark here, well, look what happens to him when you're looking from below and up, which you're always going to be doing. Um, it just doesn't work for me. Um, now, the good news is that the shader is built with Amplify. So if you have Amplify and you know your way around, you could probably fix this. Me, I don't know Amplify. This is as much as I know about it. This is the output code. But I see here that the normal depth is what actually is controlling those distortions. I found that out by playing around with the shader in the editor. Um, being a coder, I can change that in runtime. So that's what I'm going to do. Here we have a really simple script that I'm going to drop onto the camera. All it does is when it starts up, it gets the default normal depth setting from the shader and it also looks at what height the water plane is at. And then in each update cycle, it's looking to see if the camera is above the water plane or not. If it is, then it sets the normal depth to what the default value is when you boot up the um, scene. If it's below though, it sets it to zero. So there's none of this normal depth happening. And the end result is perfection. Take a look. And in one of the other scenes, yep, that's looking good as well. No real distortions anywhere. Let's go up above the water. And we do have the distortions when looking down. Perfect. So here's one more scene. This is under the ice. And we've got some lovely scholing fish there. I think we should have a look at how that works and see how reusable it is. Uh, god rays, they really like the god rays up above. We've got these uh, icebergs here, and so we can have some kind of ice scene um, that's looking good. Let's take a look at those fish shoal scripts. Okay, so here's one of the fish, and it has a fish script on it. So let's take a look at that. Okay, looks like we've got an update there. Okay, turning apply boundaries looks like this is controlling the movement of the individual fish so somewhere in here there must be a flock controller as well or a school controller there it is flock okay let's have a look what that is defined yep here it is uh, it's the global flock so that presumably means that these fishes are instantiated at runtime by that class let's go have a look at that so here is the parent object and indeed there's a global flock and that sets the number of fish that you're going to have and the wonder type there's also a movement which presumably moves the school around that's cool it looks pretty reusable okay as a last thing let's take a quick look around the prefabs that are available so here is the fish we just took a quick look at that it has the flock on it and so on the sharks are just the sharks okay and here are the individual fishes not the fish school which was the previous one there's a lot of different fish in here okay that's a huge number of just variations on a theme but that's cool it saves you having to set them all up so this is the base and it looks like it comes in lots of different parts uh, so yeah you could build up a pretty complex base with these these look pretty modular so that's good next up we have the environment what we got in here barnacles okay um shipwrecks okay so some treasure uh sand filled chest and some jewels um where's the actual ships though probably under the pieces there okay fair enough and what else we got here um got all sorts of stuff in here this is the temple i'm not seeing the vegetation but it's under kelp there i guess and well we've looked at the scripts already so i think that'll do for now so overall i think this is a really good pack there's a couple of small things that i'm not very happy with like those uh, plants that were moving around in the rock you could only really use those in the background they just looked wrong to me most importantly though is that shader thing that was going on uh, we fixed that easy enough with a bit of code but ideally that would be fixed by the publisher but lots of variety in there really like the different feels that we had it responded well to changes in the post processing very reusable you could create some great scenes out of this recommended I guess